Right, so the monstrosity you see on my screen right here is something called Inteleon VMAX. And if you are a longtime fan of this channel, uh, I did it again. I'm really sorry. I don't know why I keep playing this deck. <clears throat> it's got a chokehold on me, man. It's so, fu it's so fun when it works. Hey, guys, I'm Roll Ready, and this is the list that I played to the Portland Regional Championships. All credit goes to Victor Ong. He is a great player, a great deck builder, and he kind of, you know, convinced me. He sold me on Inteleon VMAX for the tournament. Leading up to the event... Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to play. I was taking a little bit of a break from Pokemon. Um, you know, I played Mew to Cups. Did not really, you know, Mew, Lost Box, Guardi, whatever to Cups. Didn't really go break from the status quo. I didn't really take time to kind of break the meta or whatever. I didn't really feel like there was a meta to break. And 9 p.m. deck lists were not the best for me. And so I headed over early to Seattle, early to check out Tabletop Village. It'll all be in the vlog. You guys are going to love the vlog. It's awesome. I got a tour of the Pokemon company. It was really cool. Uh, shout out to Paul. Johnston for the hospitality and all of the Pokemon company for, you know, showing me around. Uh, it, it's like a kid's dream come true, basically seeing the inner workings of the company, you know, that we play every day for. So all that being said, um, Victor and I had been talking about Inteleon for, you know, a week, about a week now. And, and we were going through matchups, figuring out stuff. And we had pretty much come down to this list. Some I'll talk through all the weird cards as we go. The idea is you use Inteleon VMAX's double gunner ability to place damage counters on the board. It does two damage counters to each to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon if you discard a water energy from your hand, giving us six waters as well as two retrievals and a Clara to work with. So that's a lot of damage counters to play with, as well as our Octillery, which gets us Rapid Strike Search. Once per turn, you get a Rapid Strike card and put it in your hand. Well, almost our entire engine is Rapid Strike cards, and we have Karina's Focus. Uh, excuse me, Jesus. Um, as a way to get more stuff. Two Drapions to deal with the Mew matchup. Octillery always bumps the path and gives us a free retreat option, so you have so much time to find those two Drapions and win the game. A 1-1 one, one copy of Single Strike or Rapid Strike Urshifu. Basically, you just get to use Gale Thrust for a ton of damage and Rapid Flow out of nowhere to do 122 bench Pokemon and set up these crazy plays with Yoga Loop. Uh, Radiant Alakazam with Painful Spoons allows you to move up to two damage counters from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one of your opponent's Pokemon, setting up perfect Yoga Loop turns out of nowhere. Wobbuffet, single strike with mirror mirror pain. Uh, two uh, energy two energy cards, colorless. You can put place damage counters on your opponent's active equivalent to one of the Pokemon on your bench. Now Wobbuffet comes into play in the Gudra matchup because the Gudra matchup is a little bit tricky, and you need to be able to um, just kind of mitigate that and put the damage on the board. Uh, just because you can take out four prizes that aren't Gudras. Uh, and like dodge them and then you get that one extra prize the horn on the comfy or something because usually they go double comfy um double comfy cramorant greninja and then you can take all those out for free prizes and then you have to close out the game that way so that's where wob came into play to kind of be the answer into that then we have articuno with wild freeze uh for the lugia matchup as well as the gardevoir matchup and like just miscellaneous matchups because a lot of decks don't really have answers to paralysis so you can always Raihan into the Articuno to Wild Freeze, set up the perfect numbers. Once again, you can usually knock yourself out as the Articuno because the prize trade can work in that favor, putting amassing 210 damage or even more with the Yoga Loop and Painful Spoons to get to a, to a point where you can loop the active or do like a big like 4-5 prize turn play. This deck was featured on stream multiple times this weekend. I'm sure you guys got a good glimpse of it. Metacham with Yoga Loop says if you knock out a Pokemon, place two damage counters. If you knock out a Pokemon this way, you get an extra turn. Pretty good. Luminion, get a supporter, you know the drill. Four research, two Irida, two Raihan. One Thornton to make plays, get guys into the play as quickly as possible. Get rid of like bad cards like Luminion on your board. Uh, one copy of Karina's Focus. We wanted a second, but there's obviously like very little space in this deck. Uh, just to have a, an out to Octillery, like going to Ultra Ball Zero to, to a zero card hand. Get the Octillery. Octillery for six. Karina's Focus. That's setting up. Uh, with Clara for the late game, bringing back things like the Metacham. Bringing back the Alakazam, maybe a piece of the Urshifu line, the Drapion, the Water Energies. The Water Energies were the most important part, honestly. Uh, reusing Articuno as well, you know, all that in the equation. One copy of Melanie was a last-minute addition. We couldn't figure out a good vanilla 60th slot to kind of fill the void, and we figured Melanie would be a little bit of a more proactive card to help in certain matchups to just get the rapid flows going early, to maybe use uh, Inteleon as an attacker, or even get Luminion off your board. Um, there's a lot of factors that we were like, maybe this is a good card. Maybe this is just a card that we can use in, in a lot of blanket scenarios. Uh, we had tested some other stuff like Celebration Zivatol, Double Turbo, things like that to kind of help the Lugia matchup. Nothing really got there. Four Ultra, four Nest, two Retrieval. Two Rope, giving us two ways to pivot out of Drapion and Alakazam and Wob. Because if you notice, if we open any of those guys, we don't have a way to retreat them. Uh, besides attaching twice. So that's that was a little bit scary. Um, and, and it kind of acts as a pseudo boss once we're rapid flowing or, you know, double gunnering and kind of setting up the board the way we want to. 
Uh, Echoing Horn closes out games very, very cleanly a lot of the time, or even sets up for those Yoga Loop plays our opponents didn't expect. One VIP pass that we can get with Sealstone or Irida um, just acts as like a, a great Irida target for turn one. One Heavy Ball, because we have a lot of one offs that are very, very important to strategy. Uh, two Forest Sealstone to help our setup in the early game. Three Tower of Waters, um, just a regular stadium. Six Water and three Rapid Strike Energy. I know that's a little bit sketchy, but a lot of the time we're not burning our energies besides on Metacham or... or or Urshi, and that doesn't typically happen very often besides once a game, so you just have to make sure that the third, if the third one's prized, you, you game plan around that um, that way. Because Inteleon always returns it to your hand. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, let's jump into the tournament report. I did go with 3-3 drop. A lot of gripes for the tournament. Uh, I'll, I'll cover that at the end. Round one was Connor Dedrick. He was playing uh, Wog Trio, which is probably the best matchup I could ask for. Everything in Wog Trio has 80 or like 90 HP or less. So I basically would win the game over two turns, where I would go Gunner, Gunner, Loop, and then... Um, Metacham had an attack that was 100 damage. So I would just attack for 100 damage, and then he would go for his mill strategy, and then I would take the knockouts. So I was able to clean that one up pretty quickly. Round 2 was against Daniel, uh, who was playing Lugia. Daniel um, was playing Duraludon. I think he misunderstood the idea of um, what Duraludon does, because he thought he could go through Paralysis, but it actually does not. He, I think he was very new to the game, and I was able to paralyze his Duraludon in the active after hitting it with Surf for 40 and maneuver damage to the point where I was able to rope, loop, I bench locked him, I looped his Duraludon and rapid flowed the Archeops and uh, Luminian for game, which was crazy. Um, that was really cool. And then in game two, um, <clears throat> he didn't really get set up, so I went for an aggressive turn two flow um, because I always went Urshifu attach, flow both Lugias. Um, he didn't really get set up past that. I think he just hit into my Urshifu and I went Melanie flow again. Uh, he took the three, and I basically set up a board where I could loop uh, and take out um, both Archeops. Uh, not Archeops, like, loop the Lugias, and then I, I was just in a position where like, I could Thornton into Thornton Clara or something with the loop. Um, put myself in a really, really good spot to do all of that, um, which felt good. Uh, round three, when I went to Tucker, uh, I took game one pretty convincingly. Tucker, game two, set up way too quickly for me to deal with Gardevoir. And then game three, uh, Tucker was never in a winning position at the end of the game. But he could have tied if he just put another Pokemon down, but I was able to clean up the game with a rope onto his Greninja, Echoing Horn, the Ralts, Double Double Gunner, uh, Alakazam, the damage, and then uh, hit the Italian attack for game. So that was really scary because time was running out pretty quickly, and I, I was pretty much in the driver's seat the entirety of game three, so I just wanted to make sure I got a win. Round four went against Nick Stewart, who you know finished 11-4, which is really, really impressive. Good for Nick. Nick was an awesome opponent. It was Arc Tina. Not a deck I expected to see. I didn't really expect to see Arc variants or Tina. Honestly, that was like my misread on the medical. Um, and it seemed like a lot of Arc decks did very, very well this weekend. Um, which, you know, mi misread on my meta. I was not really up to par on what I wanted to do. Um, game one, <clears throat> Nick kind of does not get much going. I get the early, like, Gale Thrust into Rapid Flow, like, perfect setup on everything. Um, basically just run Nick over. Uh, game two, uh, Nick does the, the reverse to me, where I basically don't get anything. He just roll, runs me over. Game three is a little bit of a tighter game. Um, no, no, game, game game two was tighter. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, I, but Nick was able to squeak it out in the end because I, I was not able to deal with everything perfectly. He got the boss knockout on my uh, Urshifu baby, like stuff like that. It just made it the game very difficult to play. Um, and then game three, I basically had like the most brickiest hand I've seen. It was like Articuno like six dead cards in my opening hand. I had Seal Stone, which doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I think I had a heavy ball and I slammed it to look for something and I didn't have an, an answer. And I was like, oh man. Uh, so that was really rough to brick uh, that game three. Round five went against Jackson. Jackson was awesome. Um, we had really good talks about anime and, and, and manga. Uh, he was a super homie. I, I really enjoyed talking to him. Um, game one, I kind of, you know, took the driver's seat, pretty much was able to do what I wanted to do against Gardevoir. Loop Curly is, uh, put him in a really precarious position. The Zacian takes a lot of damage when it comes up and does stuff, and I was just able to prize him out properly. Game two, Jackson got off to a blisteringly hot start, turned two double candy guardy, uh, one EX, one baby, and basically was able to just put pressure on immediately, uh, taking a knockout on my active Inteleon V. Um, I never was able to kind of like re reel the game back, I think. Like, no matter what I did, I was always going to be like one turn behind, you know, closing it out. Um, he didn't have any like bad targets for Horn, nothing like that. Like, it was pretty much like a perfect game from Jackson. Like, as good as good can get. And so I'm thinking game three, okay, maybe we'll be fine. And then game three, um, oh, and Jackson also put the penny. So like I knew about the penny in game two. So like I had to be very aware that I couldn't really go for an Articuno strategy. And then game three, I prized all three Italian VMAX. I don't know if you guys are on Twitter. Uh, I can actually probably pull it up. Um, 
it's it's a pretty funny picture. I I tried to play the game in any capacity I could. Um, I just did not get to play Pokemon because all three of these guys are prized. Jackson very expertly just targeted down my Urshifu uh, as quickly as possible. Did not even give me the opportunity to go for a rapid flow, uh, get some prizes potentially. I, I mean, he put the Manaphy down also, but <laughs> I think he figured out pretty quickly that I didn't have Inteleons <laughs> when I like rapid strike searched for like another baby V. Uh, in a situation that didn't make any sense to do so. Like, I, my hand was really good. In that game, too, I had a position to go double-double gunner, uh, loop a Ralts on turn two. With the way my hand was built, like, I researched into pretty much everything I needed, or I would have researched into everything I needed um, to continue playing the way I wanted to, which is unfortunate, but, you know, luck variance is a part of the game. Good luck to, you know, good fortune to Jackson. You know, he made day two. He's killing it. Uh, he's my boy. I like talking to him a lot, so it was a lot of fun. Round six, one against Caleb. Uh, game one, Caleb, basically, it was, it was Lost Box Tino, which I think is a very, very bad matchup for me as well, because they can get to 10 very quickly. Sable, I can be a menace, take out my artillery, uh, and then put damage counters on one of my VMAXs. The boss, you know, okos that VMAX with the Tina, and the second Tina will always use V-Star to close out the game. So it's very, very difficult for me to prize map in a way that can even play the game, because Tina just always has favorable trades into me. I can't really go in with, like, a Gale Thrust early, because that gives him the V-Star opportunity. Um, I can't go in with an Italian early, because, again, it gives him the V-Star opportunity. And all of a sudden, the game just becomes very, very difficult. And I don't play Shero. So game one, uh, Caleb basically like throws it by putting down too many small guys, giving me a loop opportunity. And towards the end of the game, he actually can win the game on the last turn. But I think nerves catch up to Caleb and he messes up the sequencing in the very last turn of the game and is one energy short of retreating and killing me. Game two, not the case. Just absolutely pops off, you know, gets everything he needs and it's, it's an impossible game for me. Game three, <clears throat> something very similar where like I, I miss, I have a really good turn where turn two, I can go for a rapid flow. And all I need to hit is an Octillery off the research. Like, I literally have pretty much everything I need. I just need to get the Octillery for the Stadium, or Stadium, or Ross Stadium, I think. Like, I have the VMAX in hand. I have the Double Double Gunners. I literally went, like, Double Double Gunner into, um, like, use the ability, retrieval, use the ability. Like, my, I, I had a very, very good start. Like, everything was going perfectly. And I research, miss Stadium, miss Octillery, no flow. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's sick. He goes, and he goes to 10 on turn two. Which was crazy because he had two, I think, turn one. So he went from two to ten on turn two. And Sableye knocks out my uh, Rem Raid and puts six on my Urshi. And I was like, this game has just gotten infinitely harder. And I'm pretty sure I lost the game right there, honestly. Like, I think that's like the game deciding turn. Because now I can't even go into a flow. Because now Tina's are powered. He had like one Psychic on both Tina's as well. Or like a Grass and a Psychic on like the two individual Tina's. And I'm never hand disrupting because I don't have any hand disruption. So he's sitting there with like a 20 card hand. I can't do anything. Um... And basically, I just like think about all the outs and then I can see it because I can't do anything from there and the game is over. So Caleb ends up winning. Um, unfortunately for Caleb, it looks like he didn't go 4-3 and lose the next round. But, you know, I'm not too upset with the deck. I think the deck was still really good medical. I think Lost Box regular is very, very good for us. I think that Gardevoir is a pretty or a slightly favored matchup without Penny. Or, yeah, it's a slightly favored without Penny. With Penny, it's a little bit suspect. It is what it is. Um, I think... Mew is a really good matchup. I think the meta sheer we called pretty correctly, but all the RCS decks ended up coming up and popping off. Um, the delays kind of threw me off all day. I was really, really tired for a majority of the tournament. Like, my head wasn't really in it. I had to show up at 7 in the morning. I think I made a couple mistakes here and there as well, and I could have played cleaner. Um, but I was still, like, getting used to the deck. Um, also, I couldn't find a Red Bull for, like, the life of me for some reason. Like, all the coffee shops only had coffee which i'm not i'm not a coffee drinker i know it's shocking um but anyway kind of inexcusable northwest events the day one finished at like 11 p.m <clears throat> and they had to come back at 7 30 in the morning i didn't day two so you know i can't really complain about that aspect of coming back for day two but i've done their events before i've had to come back at, at 7 30 in the morning it's miserable so yeah i mean i raised my public my stink about it um i've said my piece intolerance a lot of fun uh, it's base day off if you guys are intolerant supporters you know gang gang but um, thank you, Victor, for the list. Uh, go show him some love on Twitter. Um, Victor's awesome. Uh, I'll be going to Hartford, Milwaukee, and that'll be my, all my regionals for the season. And then NAIC and Worlds. You guys will see me there. I'm kind of done with this format. I might not put too much more effort into it, but hopefully I still have a finish somewhere. Um, no, just love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.